Welcome back to my channel everybody. I am your host Monster Gods and we are picking up a brand new series. We are doing Fallout 4 on survival difficulty. Um, our character here is named Reiner. As we can see, Reiner. Massive 85 hit points. Yep. Um, he has some decent stats. I mean obviously you know your stats are everyone has the same number but he is an intelligent man he is a charismatic man and his perception's not too bad either with endurance being his dump stat <laughs> um, so my plan for this video is actually just to be a brief introduction of the actual survival character now I actually already have him started um, because the intro is boring everyone has seen it everyone has done it and I'm just I didn't want to waste time on like video footage with like just doing the same stuff that everybody has done you see this right where I'm looking right where Red Rocket Station is over there Red Rocket Station there's like a fog cloud that's like slowly enveloping Red Rocket Station interesting um, anywho so without having to make everyone watch me do the same intro quest go to Concord save you know Preston the same stuff everyone has already done I just kinda went and did that um, we'll actually be picking up with Cambridge Station and I actually just defeated the ghouls attacking Cambridge Station and helping out the Brotherhood of Steel. So I'm going to be picking up doing the very first mission of the Brotherhood of Steel which is Arcjet Systems. Um, I'll discuss that when that video comes which will be pretty shortly but um, in terms of this actual video I just kinda wanted to let you guys know what I actually have planned for the character and what I actually plan on doing in general. So for starters um, we are playing on survival difficulty as I already mentioned and I'm going to be doing a little bit of off stream progression pretty much probably every episode um, normally I do not like doing any kind of off screen progression with my videos because I feel like you're kinda of missing something when you do that like if you guys actually want to see me do all my scavenging runs and everything I will absolutely do that I have no problem showing you that if you like that kind of stuff um, I'm going to kind of go uh, go with no for now on showing the videos unless people request it. If somebody requests it or if people request it, like multiple people, I'll take that into consideration. Um, the purpose of this video is that I'm going to be role playing a character. I'm not just playing the generic dumbass soul survivor character, which I honestly think is probably the worst character design I've ever seen for an RPG. He's so boring. He's literally just an ex-soldier whose family died and then he got thrown into a world which he's actually trained to survive in so that's really boring to me. Like the girl, if you play as a girl, her storyline's awesome. She was a freaking lawyer so like she is not prepared for this kind of world at all. Um, what I plan on doing is role playing a robotics engineer, military robotics engineer, and explosives expert. Um, I have never done explosives in this game, and in fact, in my, what, 400 plus hours of actually playing, I have actually only thrown maybe 15 to 20 explosives total. It's just never been a priority of mine. So this time around, I actually plan on doing that. Um, so I have my perks set up in a very specific manner, or my level, my stats. I am going to be doing armor, of course and that's probably the only thing from strength I'll honestly work towards I might pick up something else down the road just for fun but as of right now nope that's it three on strength perception <clears throat> I plan on picking up um, awareness at least the first level of it which I've never taken so I'm kinda interested to see how it works I'm not going to be taking I'm well hmm. I've never taken pitpocketing so I might this run just for fun but I doubt it and I'm not going to be taking any weapon skills other than grenades because or explosives because one I've never done explosives and two I'm gonna do a non-combatant kind of playthrough I'm gonna rely on mostly a robotic companion so that means once I get to level 15 and do the automatron intro I plan on only exclusively using robots from there on out unless I actually have to f use a human for whatever reason um, so I have perception because I want to get ex demolition expert. Um, 
I'll probably get locks locksmith at least level one. I might even get level two, but that's as far as I go. I will not get master for sure, but I might get at least advanced level one because I'm gonna play kind of like a, we'll call him a a doomsday prepper kind of guy. He's kind of prepared for this stuff, so he should know how to pick locks and hack. So I should probably get both rank one of at least both of them, maybe rank two of both of them. Um, like I said, awareness. I don't know what number two does. Oh, actually increased chance to hit and damage dealt in VATS, so that's actually a good idea. So I'll, I might take that because I'm going to be using VATS a lot because my character's skills are going to suck. So I'm going to rely on VATS to kind of help me out. I don't think I'll go any higher in perception because there's no skills that I really want or that actually like, make sense for my character. Um, endurance, there's basically nothing I really want. I mean, like I can try and get it up to 5 and get Aqua Boy, but eh, most likely I won't. I'm going to probably just rely on having, you know, my companion do all the heavy shit for me so that way I don't have to. Um, if I do end up at a level where I don't know what to put points into, I will just put it into, endur into endurance just for the extra hit points. But my main focus are is going to be intelligence and charisma. As you can see, they're already pretty high just to start off with. And it's because I'm going to be taking a lot of the skills from it. I will be taking cap collector because I plan on doing settlement building um, and I'm not going to do vans I will probably take medic just so that way I can build a medic in my settlement and that's probably the only actual reason why I'm going to do that um, I'm not going to take lady killer, I will not take lone wanderer I will for sure take gun nut because I need to upgrade my robots with gun nut and I might actually do the same thing with blacksmith down here I might actually increase my strength to get blacksmith so I can do melee robots but otherwise armor Blacksmith, Gun Nut, and Science I'll all be taking points into because I need to upgrade my robots. I will for sure take Scrapper. In fact, that's probably the first thing I'm going to take. Or actually, I think that is the first thing I took, I should say. Um, will not do Attack Dog because I don't like using dog meat at all. Um, animal Friend, I don't believe so. But I might take a point in it just to see how it works because I've never actually used it. And I've heard that it can actually be kind of neat. Um, but you don't face animals too often. Unless I wonder if like rad scorpions and like the Meyer lurks and that count. Not sure. Um, local leader is an absolute must for me. Every playthrough I definitely put both points into it. Both levels. And then chemist. I've never done chemist but I think I'm going to this playthrough. At least rank one. No, not party boy. I will be increasing my charisma and my intelligence. Probably a couple more each. I want to actually get up to nuclear physicist and robotics expert, so nine intelligence, because I want both these. I want to be able to upgrade my robots, and I actually want to be able to use power armor. Um, the power armor is going to be kind of a defensive thing for me because I need to survive, and I'm not going to be using any legendary like armor. So that's actually one of my other things about this intro video that I want to discuss. I'm only going to use legendary weapons and I'm not going to use any named one so I'm not going to like if there's one that someone buys me like if there's one I can buy or someone gives me I'm not going to use that one only random drop legendary weapons no legendary armor pieces at all and except for with the exception of if a martyr piece drops I might take that just because I think that is a good item for my character kind of if he gets hit then he knows to get out of there then with the increased charisma, I want to get inspirational. I've never taken it, but I want to increase the damage of my companions and make it so they can't hurt me with their explosives and whatnot. And same with eventually number two, where I can't hurt them as well with grenades. And then if I get to rank three, that'd be awesome where they can carry more weight. Because in survival, your weight capacity is reduced. Um, this is the other thing. So the wasteland creature is kind of like the animal one, but I think for like rad scorpions and stuff, I've never tried it and I would kind of like to actually see how it works but I don't really care all that much about it so I don't know if I'll take a point in it. And then same with intimidation. I think it sounds really cool but I don't know if it's worth getting my charisma up to 10. So there's no plan on it but maybe I will just for fun down the road. Um, agility is only at 3 because stealth is the only thing I need sneak. I don't need either of these two things but I do need sneak for sure because I need to stay hidden. Even if my robot gets detected, I don't get detected, so I need to make sure that I can stay hidden. 
I'm um, not going to do Mr. Sandman. I doubt I'll do Action Boy. So yeah, so I doubt I'll increase my agility anymore unless later on down the road I decide that I need something from this tree that I don't already have. Luck is at 3, which is actually really unique for me because I normally like having luck quite a bit higher. Um, luck increases the chance of how much or like how much my critical hits bar recharges and normally I like getting up to idiot savant but I'm not going to be taking idiot savant this time through because I'm going to have a very high intelligence and the proc chance is going to be slow, so low that I don't think it's worth a point um, and then if for some reason I decide that I need to start doing more damage or whatever or I need to like, use my weapons more I might do better criticals and critical banker but I doubt it um, I don't think I'm going to waste points on increasing my luck to get to this point. And then finally, I will most likely take Scrounger and most likely Bloody Mess at some point in time, but they're like back burner perks. Like I don't plan on taking them anytime soon, but the extra ammo might be useful just because I'm going to be doing such low damage that I kind of am probably going to need more ammo. But if I can afford to just buy ammo with my settlement stuff, I'm not going to bother taking it. Um, I did hear that rank 4 you can get fusion cores now, and I don't know how that works. I haven't looked into it, but someone told me that if you have rank 4 in Scrounger, that fusion cores can actually drop, which if that's actually possible, that's extremely helpful in survival because they're much rarer. So that's what I plan on doing for like stats and perks and whatnot. Um, as for my actual character himself, he is going to be directly opposed to both the Brotherhood of Steel and the Institute because he thinks that both of their uses of technology is kind of, you know, it's not good. Like, the Brotherhood of Steel kind of takes technology and keeps it for themselves, which is exactly what they preach to hate. Like, they hate, like, people using technology because they're going to destroy themselves with it. But they walk around in power armor and have their big-ass ship. Like, they're the exact thing that they claim to hate, basically. And that's how my character views them anyways. Personally, I have different opinions than them. I like the Brotherhood of Steel, but Reiner here, he does not. So he's going to use them to get power armor and equipment, but aside from that, he hates them. The Institute, on the other hand, he's very curious about. They seem to be very high-level scientists, which he likes. But at the same time, they do more harm than good, which is you know also not good. Um, he thinks they're kind of reckless and he doesn't like that. Now the one person that he has a lot in common with is the Mechanist. Um, he actually has heard about the Mechanist from the Capital Wasteland and he wants to meet, meet this person. Um, he heard that they're in the Commonwealth and he wants to meet them. So upon reaching level 15 that's gonna be the first thing he's gonna do is look out the Mechanist. Look up the Mechanist because he wants to find them and perhaps join sides because he also wants to build tons of robots and that's actually how most of my settlements are going to be they are going to be mostly robots once I get that to get to that point with a handful of humans um, uh oh humans are going to be a very 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 low priority for his settlements uh oh uh oh yeah, yeah. Um, he doesn't care if there's really that many humans in his settlements because he doesn't really like people that much. He never really got along with them. And in fact, that's why he went to war originally, is because humans were just kind of, you know, they're crappy people. And he doesn't have any special affinity for them, so he figured his robots can do, you know, what humans can't. So that's his view on that. Here's why I have. This is a really useless place. Figures why have humans in your settlements when you can have robots. And that's how we're going to play them. So that's kind of my explanation, the quick and dirty version of it. Um, with the final explanation being that, like I said, I've already got the game started. And um, I believe level 9, about to hit level 10. We'll hit level 10 pretty quickly into the first couple minutes in the game because I'm start I've already started the ArcJet mission. And... We face some stuff on the way to the arc jet, so yep. So I will see you guys there. I hope you guys enjoy this new series. I'm actually very excited for it because it sounds like a lot of fun. 
and I've kind of I have a few things planned for it that I'll explain when the time comes in the game, but for now I'm just going to kind of leave you with that. It's going to be a very non-traditional let's play. I'm not going to be doing all the big story missions really. It's going to be a lot of the side stuff and a lot of settlement stuff. So I kind of want to keep it like a role play. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any like ideas or things you'd like to see me do specifically, let me know. I'll keep it like in the back of my head and if I think it's worth doing, I'll do it. I if you guys have any cool ideas for like a settlement, like something that's not super like over the top, like I'm not going to build a giant skyscraper or something, but if you guys have a cool idea or like there's a certain settlement area that you like to, you'd like to see me build in, let me know and I'll keep it in consideration. Right now I'm using um the what is it called? The big movie theater area, drive-in theater, I can't think of what it's called off the top of my head. But that's where my main base is going to be currently. I have stripped everything of Sanctuary and Red Rocket Station, so there's literally nothing. like, Except for fences, I left the fences, and then the crafting stations. Otherwise, I cleared out everything else. So, yeah, no Sanctuary and no Red Rocket Station. Um, if you guys have another base you'd like to see me build in, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to stick with the movie theater for now. Alright, I will see you guys on the first or the first official episode. See you around.